Hi all, this is Karthik from Design School for WordPress Beginners, the place where I teach you how to design, build and customize your website. If you are new here, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on amazing new future updates. Elementor version 2.6 is out in beta and the biggest feature in it is the inclusion of Font Awesome 5 icons. I've already taught how to include Font Awesome 5 using the script and HTML Elementor widget. Before Elementor version 2.6, they were using Font Awesome 4 version and in this version, they're actually using Font Awesome 5.2.1, I believe. And the latest version of Font Awesome 5 is 5.9. For legacy reasons, they chose to stick with 5.2.1. Here are the new things that you can find in Elementor version 2.6, starting with the icon. So pick any widget that has icon in it. I'll just pick the icon widget itself, click and drag it. And once you drag it, you get this warning saying, hey, there's a new icon library which is updated and in order to continue, you need to click on update. I highly recommend you click on update. If you don't, you'll still be using the old font or some four icons. And if you update it, you'll get all the 1400 new icons and you can do a lot of cool stuff with font or some five. So I'll just click on update and it, so it'll take me to this prompt where I get this message saying, Hey, we're going to upgrade your font or some five icons or the icons that you use in your Elementor page builder. And because of that, there'll be few conflicts and that stuff so that they'll actually replace all the font or some four icons with the font or some five icons. And in the future, whenever you add a new icon, it will be font or some five. So that's really amazing. So you just click on upgrade to font or some five and yeah, just click on continue. And that's it. That's all you need to know. Now it will take you back to the page that you were editing this. So I'll just type icon in the search box and I'll just drag in my icon widget wherever I want. And you can see that there are two options here. So the first option is icon library, which is the library of font awesome five icons. You can click on the icon library title over here, or you can simply click on the icon itself and they'll both open the font awesome five library. So this may look familiar if you already know what you're typing. So font awesome has a variety of styles regular is just a proper styling and solid will have fills within that so the difference between regular and solid few icons have brands as well so you find apple uber all sorts of that stuff let's see if you find elementor in here i don't think there's elementor i think yeah they have elementor in here so that's really great so you can type in your favorite brand and get the icon for it and on the side you have all icons font awesome regular font awesome solid and font awesome brands so if you just want to find an icon, you need to click on all icons and search for it. But if you know what you're going to type, so if I want to find Elementor, but if I want to see if it has a regular version of font or some icon, I can click on regular. So that will filter out all the regular icons. Now I can type the name and there's no Elementor here as you can see. So it must have been in brands. So you can either click on brands and then easily find Elementor or you can click on all icons so that will have all the icons without any filter so these are like neat little filters to narrow down your search or simply you can click on the filter and scroll through the list of icons so that's really amazing so this is the new icon library in elementor version 2.6 the second big feature is native svg support we already know that elementor supports svg out of the box through the image widget but now they brought it to the icon widget so it will treat your svgs the way it treats icons so the way the font awesome five icons can be styled, your SVGs can also be styled. Just locate your SVG, upload it and click on insert and it inserts that SVG. And here's a pro tip with SVG. They can be styled without losing any quality. So no matter how much you style them, how much you size them, they're still going to retain that amazing clarity. So if I go all over to 7000 pixels, you cannot see any pixelation in that. That's because SVGs are vector based and no matter what the size is, they'll just stay crisp and that's a huge benefit. But the problem is that they may pose security threat because of the code that they can host. So Elementor tries to clean up the code and it tries to input the best possible version of SVG. But again, use SVGs at your own risk because this might compromise the security of your website and which is the reason that halted its adoption in WordPress. But hey, if you do it from trusted sources, there's nothing that's going to go wrong. 
so svg support so svg picker right within the icon widget so anything that has an icon you can use svgs instead of icon so even in my icon box widget i can just go here and again i can click on upload svg and here Elementor just shows the SVG files instead of your whole media library saying only that SVGs can be used in the place of your icons. That's really neat. So whatever SVGs you have on your website, only those will be shown here, but not your whole media library. So that's really neat. And that's an amazing way to use SVGs as icons in your Elementor page builder. So here's the third new feature in Elementor version 2.6. So if you go to settings, in your dashboard and under advanced you'll find new options or new drop downs that you can pick from so if you want to disable the svg uploads by default you can click this and click on save changes and here they have support for awesome font awesome 4 icons so if you want to use them or if you already have a lot of icons on your designs and if you don't want to break them after updating to font awesome 5 which is the latest version used in version 2.6 you can enable this and this will make sure that those icons don't break but i see few of my icons still break let's see it's still in beta so things will change so these are two new toggles or drop downs added under advanced options of elementor settings the fourth new feature is the navigator indicator so when you make changes to a particular widget so let's say if you change the position of the widget so let's say i change this to absolute and i just moved it around and when i open the navigator interface i can now see a blue outline showing me that a custom position has been used for this widget you can see here so this will be a blue line and when you hover over it you can clearly see that a custom positioning label is highlighted and i can clearly see that custom positioning field or the custom positioning method has been used for both the, both of these this will be particularly helpful when you have a complex design and don't know which elements were modified by using the custom positioning property now you can see all of them in navigator and you can simply click on that particular element and you can if you want to you can simply reset the style from there or you can do it right from within the navigator interface itself so if you want to change the position or properties of the element from the navigator interface it becomes really easy and in future they'll also add indicators for custom css and motion effects as well so you know when a motion effect has been applied to a particular widget or when custom css has been added to a particular widget or section or a column so this will be really helpful to locate areas in which you've added custom css in your design so you don't necessarily have to add custom css at global level you can also add it locally and there will be indicators for that in future version precisely these are the indicators they already added indicator for custom positioning and from the screenshot you can see if you have added motion effects to a particular widget section or a column it will be this lightning bolt icon and if you have added custom css it will be this code icon that will clearly indicate that that element has been modified with those kind of property coming in at number five are the help icons so in every widget at the bottom you now see a need help icon or text so if you click on it it will take you to the documentation of that particular widget that you are in so if you are using text editor and if you click on need help it will take you to the documentation of that particular widget if i pick a different widget so if i click heading widget and if i click on need help it will take me to documentation of heading widget well that's all it does but again it's a neat little way to know about the widget by learning from official elementor website this will be particularly helpful for beginners who don't really know the basics of that particular widget again it's a handy addition to elementor version 2.6 coming in at number six are the video options well when you have a video self-hosted or a youtube video in your background or as a background video you can pick the start time and end time directly from here and then you also have an option to play it just once so if you have a big video and if you want to play it just once just click this toggle it's available within the background section of any section column or a widget that supports background so it's really neat coming in at number seven is svg as background image now that svg is natively supported by elementor you can pick it as a background image for any section column or widget so i just click on this section and i can click choose image 
and I can choose the SVG that I uploaded earlier. Simply click on insert image and it can be formatted using all the options available for the image. So I can make it repeat. I can also change the size from cover to contain. I'll make it repeat across X and Y. I'll change the position and you can see the pattern being repeated and all the properties being applied to the SVG file that we just uploaded earlier. So it's really handy and it's also really cool to get these neat little patterns just by uploading SVG image since it doesn't put much of a load on your server. It's really a great way to have background patterns of this sort. Coming in at number 8 is the 9 by 16 aspect ratio in the video widget. So you can pick 9 by 16 aspect ratio in widget. This is a vertical form of video and I think they're going to add support for Instagram, Instagram TV videos which is why they included this aspect ratio. I think here they're going to have Instagram TV in addition to all these sources. Maybe that's the reason why they included this aspect ratio. Again, this is commonly found on Instagram TV. In fact, it's one of the sources promoting this aspect ratio. So let's see what it does. But for now, just be informed that this aspect ratio is available within your video widget. Coming in at number 9 is the dynamic option for the link field in the social icons. So when you have the social icons widget on your page under link, you can pick dynamic from here. Well, how is this useful? Well, if you move your Facebook page from one URL or if you change the Facebook page or if you created a new business page for your business, well, you can simply have a custom field and link that to this dynamic option. So you don't have to manually enter this all the time. You can simply give or change the value of that particular custom field and the user can enter a different field or pick a different value by using the dynamic options provided here. Or if you have too many business pages, you can click the dynamic option and pick the URL field from there. Maybe you can have a drop down listing out all your business pages so that you can pick the one you have. So it's handy in those situations. Again, dynamic link field is added to each icon in the social icons widget. And just like the icon widget, even here you have the options to pick icon library or you can also pick an SVG that you uploaded earlier or insert a new SVG. So these options are universal and wherever you see icons, you'll see all these options that are available for each icon even within the social icons widget and that's really awesome. So coming in at number 10 is progress bar styles. You can pick different kinds of progress bars from here. So that will basically change the color, the fill color of the progress bar. And if you go to style, you can adjust the color from here. So you have the color picker. You also have the option to change the height. So you can customize it the way you want. You can also change the border radius to give that rounded corner look. You can see that from here. You can also change the color of the text from here. So you can pick a different color or controls to customize the look of your progress bar. You can simply adjust the height and the border radius. That's all and that's pretty much it. You can also change the title style. Maybe you can pick a font for your title. You can change the typography, all that. Coming in at 11, they have alignment option for the icon list widget. So you can align icons based on your preference. So if you have a lot of them, you can align all of them onto the center or onto the left and you can do all sorts of that stuff. We did this with CSS grid and when I explained the icon and icon list widget, I wished for this. Now it's here. It's also responsive so you can pick the alignment based on the device that you want. So it's really cool. You don't have to do CSS grid anymore since Font Awesome 5 is included and the alignment is included. You don't even have to write a single piece of code. All this can be done by using sliders within the Elementor widgets. Coming in at number 12 is the ability to toggle visibility of a column in the navigator interface. Previously they didn't allow you to do it. And if you watched the navigator tutorial, again, I pointed this out. Now you can simply click on the eye icon to toggle the visibility of that column. So you can see your design with and without that particular column. They had this for section and widgets, but they didn't have it for column. But in version 2.6, now it's added. Coming in at number 13 is the alignment options in column. So in previous versions, you used to select these options and they were not responsive. But now in version 2.6, you can pick based on the type of device that you want. So this is highly helpful when you're using inline auto and when you're designing different layouts for different de devices. So for instance, for tablet, maybe you can pick space around and for mobile, maybe you can pick space between depending on the preference or the kind of layout that you're trying to achieve. 
so that's really handy and this option is now responsive you can see the desktop icon you can click on it and change the options per device coming in at number 14 is the text shadow option in button so you can add a neat little text shadow to the finally within image carousel widget you have vertical align option so if the image doesn't quite fit the container you can use this so that's it these are all the new enhancements and features added in element version 2.6 I'll keep you posted on this if I find any new features but that's it for now other than these they have few under the hood performance tweaks and UI tweaks which you'll find out yourself when you use it but these are the major features and the headlining features are SVG support and font awesome 5 icons. People have been asking it for so long and finally they're here in Elementor version 2.6. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you didn't already. I'll talk to you in the next video. Peace.